All right, welcome back everybody. This is day two at Eichmer. As you can see, we're at the Ducati stand. Now, yesterday was the press day, so it was nice and quiet because only the lucky few that get a press pass get to come in, but everybody's here today, full public. So excuse me if it's a little bit busy, but we're gonna try and take a look at the new Ducati Scrambler lineup, which has had a massive update for this year. So come and have a look. This is the Icon model. You may recognize it, but there's some really significant changes. So here are the key things that you need to know about it. All right, number one, the biggest change to this bike is the styling. And personally, I'm a little bit torn on this one because, you know, it's a retro inspired bike, but they've really gone down a much more modern route. Let's take a look at some of the specifics though. You'll see the new fuel tank design. It's got some of the same styling cues. They've got the yellow paintwork and these metal infills at the side. I think they're removable so you can customize the bike. But yeah, it has got a new shape to it. It looks a little bit more modern. It looks a little bit more chiseled. And then they've modernized some of the rest of the bike to suit. So while that LED light at the front still gets the daytime running light around the edge and the X in the middle, you know, it's a new design with a slightly more modern shape. New indicators, those look pretty good as well. And there's a new LED tail light at the back end. You'll also see the bodywork. So we've got the SCR like scrambler graphics on the side there. There's a new seat with the X logo in the top. You've got different engine casings for this year as well with the X logo and then there's a new design for the wheels. I really like the look of these wheels. Let's go around the other side. You'll get a little bit of a better view of them. It's a little bit similar to the ones that were previously on this bike but maybe slightly more of a reference to that spoke style. A little yellow block on there as well which is really common across the Ducati lineup now. You'll see it on the Multistrada. They've got a little red block on the rims. Now, like I say, this bike was built originally to reference the Ducati scrambler of the 60s and 70s so that's why it had that tank shape with the yellow paint and the metal side panels this bike takes it in a more modern direction i'm not sure if i like it i like that historical angle but maybe this new incarnation of the scrambler over the past few years has kind of established itself and it can stand on its own two feet now without having to look backwards at the old original scrambler either way let me know what you think of it down in the comments this new styling i'd love to hear your thoughts too loads of new colorways as well for this model year so we've got a couple of red variants the blues black green and then we've got an orange over here the original yellow over there. So it's nice to see that. There's not many manufacturers that do the different color options as well as like Royal Enfield. They always have, you know, six, seven, eight different colors for the Interceptor and the Continental GT and the new Meteor and Hunter. So it's nice to see such an array of choice on these bikes. Not sure which one my favorite would be. Normally, if I was gonna go for a Ducati, I think I'd go Ducati Red, but for the Scrambler, because of that heritage, probably the yellow. Let's have a look at this bike here though. One of the big changes You'll notice actually previous gen of the Scrambler had those throttle cables looping up over here. It looked a little bit untidy maybe, but this generation doesn't have them, not because they've neatened it up, but because it's now a ride by wire throttle. So there's no throttle cables, it's all done electronically. And the beautiful thing about that is it means that they can now add riding mode. So it's got a road mode and also a wet mode. Four levels of traction control intervention. So in the wet mode, it's gonna give you the keenest traction control to save the back end from stepping out and chucking you off. And also, I guess it's got a less aggressive throttle map in that wet mode. So a nice advancement if you're a city rider or you commute and sometimes you've gotta go out no matter what the weather to get to work on time, then the wet mode might be of interest. It still gets cornering ABS as standard. That's the same as the previous generation, but what a nice feature for a bike at this point price point and then all that stuff can be managed through this TFT display which is brand new now again I'm a little bit torn on this one because the whole vibe of this bike is meant to be retro and old school but you'll see quite a modern rectangular shape that doesn't quite fit with the original ethos of the scrambler they've tried a little bit to soften it with a circular surround on it to make it look a little bit more in keeping with the rest of the bike but personally, I think something like the round TFT display on the Triumph Trident, for example, you know, that does a great job of keeping that traditional form factor, but with all the functionality that you get from a TFT dash. Still, if you're not an absolute poser like me and you don't really care what it looks like, then you'll probably appreciate all the extra functionality. So the menu systems that allow you to set all of your riding modes and aids, and also it does get some phone connectivity features. So you can connect over Bluetooth to your mobile phone, and that'll give you the ability to handle calls and messages if you're wearing a Bluetooth headset. And I think it might also do a little bit of turn-by-turn -turn nav and that sort of thing. So really it's a big step up from the old Scrambler, which was quite simplistic, if maybe a little better looking. How's it going? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Hello. Yeah, yeah. What's your name, sorry, man? 
Orosh. You're here for work or just for? No, uh, yes, uh, working. Uh, what, who do you work for? Uh, motorcycle frames. Oh, nice. Cool. Oh, I think your buddy's going to take the picture. You can be uh, in the Ducati Scrambler video. <laughs> Nice to meet you. You too, mate. Have a yeah. great show, okay? And thanks for saying hi as well. So the next big update for the Scrambler lineup is the frame. It's a completely new design to the trellis frame. New swing arm, new subframe as well. They've moved the shock closer to the center of the bike and also steepened up the head angle here. So it should handle a little bit more quickly and turn in a little quicker and that should make for a more nimble and agile bike. But more than that, They've managed to shed loads of weight. So across the frame, but also the engines had some work done to drop a few kilograms. And across the board, it's now four kilograms lighter than the previous generation. Now that's impressive because this was always one of the lightest retro bikes you can buy. It's 170 kilograms dry now, 185 kilogram curb weight. And if you compare that to something like the Triumph Scrambler 900, you know those Bonnevilles are up over 200 and some in kilograms, 210, 220 or something like that when they're wet. So this is a much more nimble, flickable, agile little bike. It was already the lightest bike, but this new 2023 improvement in weight is only going to cement its place as the most nimble little retro on the market. So let's talk about the price, which they have released. So the Icon over here, that's 9995. Then you've got the full throttle, which we'll go and have a look at over here, mate. This is said to be inspired by the sort of US flat track scene. So you'll see that in the graphics, in the side panels, the number boards. You also get the Termin Yorni silencer there. This one comes in at 10,995. And then we've got the night shift. So this is a little bit more old school looking. You've got the spoke wheels, flat handlebars, bar and mirrors, a flat bench seat there. That's brown, which looks really nice. Different bodywork and also this kind of like night shift paint work, a deep blue. This, like the full throttle, also comes in at 10,995, which, I mean, that price has crept up a little over the last few years. I think the Icon used to be eight to nine grand. Now it's pushing 10. You do get a lot of extra functionality with the TFT dash and the riding modes now, and it's a little bit lighter. And also the context you need is probably the other Scrambler you'd be considering is the Scrambler 900 from Triumph, which we talked about. That's 9,595. So a few hundred quid cheaper, but it is heavier. It's not as powerful. It doesn't get as many tech features. And so with that in mind, I think the Icon looks like pretty good value. As always though, I'd love to know what you think of it down in the comments below, so let me know. And if you wanna see all of the bikes that we're covering here at Icma, there's a playlist. I'm gonna to link to it here. You can see everything we've uploaded so far. And if you keep your eye on it over the next few days, there'll be more bikes coming. A massive thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one. Awesome. Hey, smashing today. Let's yeah. go do the Enfield because then you can kind of pack the rig down for now.